What's going on everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of our Toronto Maple Leafs franchise mode series season two with the Leafs so we'll get right into it and as always if you enjoy the video smash the like button subscribe to the channel the support helps me out a ton I appreciate you for being here so real quick here season two with the Leafs you're gonna go over our lines as usual um, this team looks pretty good uh, I think we made some nice um, you know, off-season additions with LeBanc and Backlund. We got Amarov and Nyes playing up on the fourth line with us. Uh, top six looks good. And uh, yeah, I mean, we took care of a lot of huge contracts. Um, just because we have Nylander and, you know, Marner extended uh, doesn't mean that I'm terribly opposed to trading them um, or doing whatever, you know, if it helps the team so we'll just monitor basically how this team's doing uh use this season as sort of a i guess last chance <laughs> to win a uh, stanley cup or at least make it to, in a deep playoff run with this team before we try making some moves um take a look at the defense looks pretty good as well riley sandin they're developing nicely for us uh riley as well 30 years old um he's on a very long extension six more years so uh not opposed to moving him if it might benefit the team um goaltenders we are rolling with samsonov and hill again um hoping they can pull it off if not you know again uh kind of this last effort here this season to see what these guys can do for us and if nothing's sort of coming up from it then we'll have to look into making some moves with some of these guys but overall everything looks good and as always we'll sim out to january 1st of 2025 and see how we're doing then all right so at the start of the new year we are playing pretty well 21 12 and 4 good for 46 points um tied for first in the east actually with the bruins and the penguins there um, 46 points also wild and Canucks playing really well um, so yeah we're doing pretty well Austin Matthews there 31 points in 37 games so he is doing what we want him to do and everything looks good um, I don't think that we want to make any moves now but I might take a look around um, see maybe what we can do especially as these guys their values go up during the year if they're playing well so we're going to take a look around, head into the trade deadline, see how we're doing then, and just evaluate sort of what we want to do. All right, so right before the trade deadline here, we are playing really well. 41-17-5 at the deadline. Uh, good for first uh, in the Eastern Conference. 87 points. Also puts us first in the league. Um, Matthew's there, just on a heater now. 67 points in 63 games. Uh, everything's looking good so headed into the deadline I think if we're gonna make any moves it's gonna be to make our team better but also you know keeping in mind the future um, right some of these players are aging um, you know we'll still have some big contracts to think about uh, things headed into the offseason so we also want to be forward thinking here going into the deadline so um, you know we'll go into the deadline here uh, I want to do conservative buyer um, and let's let's do it Okay, guys, so something I'm trying to do here is make an absolutely massive trade with LA Kings Offering a first this year a third next year Morgan Riley and Matthew Nyes in exchange for their first this year Brant Clark and Gabe Velarde. Uh, I really like Velarde's contract there um, So so good just such a good like, you know, really power forward, but also two big guy great defensive stats um, as Tavares is aging we're really gonna need a solid number two C and I think he can provide that also Brant Clark here again as Riley he's aging he's gonna be 31 um, you know really on a long contract I think we could use that money and put him back into Clark uh, put the money back into Clark for uh, excuse me on an extension with him they don't have any of these things on the block so I'm kind of nervous they're gonna say no the value is on our side just slightly though survey says oh Oh, oh my. Okay. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> uh, I guess that's just the trading in this game. I mean, like last season we had the Bruins who were just being 
really um you know stingy on a trade we were trying to make for a first round pick and not really anything else they didn't want to give it to us but <laughs> um la wow uh that's a blockbuster for sure um i think we kind of fleeced a little bit not gonna lie um their first round pick is gonna be higher than ours so you know they're currently in, in a wild card spot in the west so they don't make the playoffs that could uh be even better for us i think we kind of fleece them on that though um yeah so that happened <laughs> because another small trade i'm trying to make is trading yarn crow to the flames for a second and third on pick value there's actually pretty easy even maybe on our side a little bit yarn crow 33 85 good player two years 2.1 so cheap deal um but again just players aging out um i think we have to be a little more forward thinking here make some moves in the off season uh, we also have velarde now um and you know that blaine kid coming up too so uh we want to think about the future see what they say to this and they say yes all right good stuff they say give force in the mouse i mean i i don't know that i agree the value is pretty even there um and we have good guys coming up so I, i'd say a good trade for both of us all right guys another small trade i'm trying to make is martindale in a fifth send him to st louis for a second this year yeah this year 2025 um and jake neighbors here uh martindale was one of those low league guys we drafted he's got a lot of x factors but you know last year he's just really not developing you know sometimes those second round picks they either develop or they don't um like i said we got a lot of young prospects who are developing can easily take his place um because of the x factors and low elite status he has a lot of trade value um let's see what they say to this second round pick so it could be decently high considering they're right at 500 uh might not make the playoffs this season uh, and jake neighbors here a very solid young player 22 years old 82 overall uh pretty nice stats physical guy you know probably could play like our scouts say third line maybe fourth line um gonna have to sign them see what they say to this and reject it okay so maybe they want a higher pick or something let's see what we can do all right so i ended up swapping a second round this year to the bruins second round it's a little less value um hopefully that helps and it does okay so got another second round pick out of it and that is a good trade on our end uh getting jake neighbors back you'll love to see it all right, so the trade deadline is over, and obviously we know this was a super successful trade deadline for us, um, but let's take a look at the rest of the league. Uh, Tyler Toffoli, they're going to Buffalo. Wow, you see Soros uh, going to Columbus in exchange for Tom Wilson, second rounder, and others. That's a pretty big trade there. Susie going to Montreal. There was our trade for Jake Neighbors in a second. Uh, Magnuson to Nashville. Troy Stetcher there to Calgary. Let's see anything else. Granlin and Guriano, they're going to Vancouver. Uh, Kerfoot going to New Jersey. Uh, Gudis there going to the Islanders. Um, this was our trade for second and third for Yarncroak. And let's see Adam Larson there going to the Stars, D'Angelo to the Sabres. Uh, wow, Jeremy Swayman going to Pittsburgh. And what? Okay, wow. Uh, that was unexpected. Sidney Crosby, they're going to Boston Bruins. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. That's another blockbuster right there for sure. Uh, Mukamodina, Vegas. There was our massive trade with LA for Clark and Velarde in a first. Um, then Kalorn and Stroman going to Florida. Uh, Nick Paul to the Sharks. Hamannick and Balsers to Tampa. And Salamonson to the Islanders. So. Um, pretty active trade deadline. I mean, I really like our moves. Um, yeah, really successful. There was that trade alert. Another trade alert. Wow, I'm surprised that ours wasn't uh, considered a blockbuster, but whatever. NHL, don't like us, I guess. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to the end of the season here. And we're in a pretty good spot to make the playoffs. 
And just want to show you an updated look at the lines after the trade deadline. Um, top six remains mostly the same, except we're going to uh, slot in Velarde there um, in the second line. Really solid. Uh, bottom six also looks good. We got neighbors playing left wing there on the fourth line. Um, so, you know, I like the way that this uh, makeup looks here. Um, got a power forward sniper and a playmaker on the second line. So I like that a lot. On the defense here, we got Sandine and Liljegren on the first line, get a plus two. We got Clark playing with his old teammate, uh, Matt Roy, and then Timmons and McKay browning it out. So that bottom pairing is certainly going to be something we want to work on over the offseason. Uh, and then goalies obviously uh, don't change. Samsonov actually playing really well for us this season. Uh, poise went up a little bit to an 86, so we'd like to see that. And we will go to the end of the regular season here. All right, so the end of the regular season, we finish with a record of 57, 20, and 5. Good for 119 points, and that'll land us the President's Trophy. Um, so really good season here. Um, as you can see the playoff picture, I want to check the Western Conference. The Kings did not make the playoffs, so that first round pick is going to be even better for us. Um, you know, not going to be a lottery pick, but uh, still going to be... Um, probably a mid first round, um, maybe like, you know, top 18 perhaps. So um, I really like that trade even more for us. We'll take a look at our points leaders. Matthews, they're leading the way with 91 points. Uh, look at our forwards first here. Nylander, Marner, so that first line popping off. Second line, really good too. Um, Kane, Tavares, and Velarde. I'm curious how he did with us. Uh, 16 points in 19 games, so really good. Um, really good trade for us there. Um, LeBanc there, um, 45 points. Jake Neighbors on the fourth line, seven points, not bad. Um, so he definitely was worth it as well. Um, and just kind of a lot of nice depth scoring that we see here. Defenseman Brent Clark actually leading our team now, 36 points. Uh, six points with us, plus seven though. Love to see it. Um, I really like that he's in 85 overall already, Sandine there. Uh, everyone playing well and everyone has a positive rating, which is great to see. Uh, as for goalies here, yeah, good numbers from both guys. Samson up there, uh, solid numbers as a starter. And then Aiden Hill, really fantastic as a backup. So uh, we absolutely love to see it. Now let's look at the entire league here. See who uh, Samson up actually led the league in wins. Uh, we'll see highest save percentage for a starter was Demko there, 0.923, wow. Uh, and then goals against for a starter here, also Demko. So he will probably win the Vezina this season. Take a look at defenseman here, McAvoy, 98 points and a plus 35. So yeah, he'll probably be walking away with the Norris, absolutely insane. And as far as we go, McKinnon, 125 points, are you kidding me? Uh, wow. Uh, lots of players with over 100 points, though. Stamkos, Barkov there, McDavid, and then Kucherov rounding it out. Uh, for the Maurice Richard, it'll be Ovechkin with 61 goals. Uh, take a look at rookies here. Connor Bedard there leading the way, 87 points. He'll definitely win the Calder. Uh, Turcotte there, 60 points, 82 games as well. Nazar, 60 points. Um, so really good uh, rookie class here. And looking at the playoffs, we have the Columbus Blue Jackets in the first round of the playoffs. So do you want to go and see who they have? I totally forgot to do that last season. Oh, uh, wow. That first one's pretty sick. A Joe Reinhardt line, uh, Johnson, Sillinger, and Chinikov. Uh, pretty good depth, too. I mean, the 66 overall guy, though, with Marchenko and Robinson. Pretty interesting. Uh, defense, Wierenski, Boquist, Matejic, and Juracek. Uh, Bean and Blankenberg, so pretty solid here. Uh, goalies, oh wow, yeah, they made that trade for Saros. It's a 90 overall, so this team looks like good on paper. Not the best record, but you see that last 10, 9 and 1, so uh, they definitely benefited from getting Saros there. So um, let's sim these first two games, see what happens. 4 3 overtime win and a 7 5 loss. Okay, so. We'll take the split, 5-3 win, a 3-2 OT win, up 3-1 in the series. We'll sim this period by period here, tied after one. 
up to Matthews and Velarde for us. And we close out the series, Matthews with two goals in that game, Velarde with one goal. And we move on to the second round. So no first round curse here for us. Uh, we absolutely love to see that. Um, John Tavares there leading with nine points in five games. And we're still waiting. We're still waiting. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and we have Florida in the second round. Oh gosh, um, this might not be good for us. Let's take a look at who Florida has. Well, not Duclair because he's on the uh, Ducks there. Um, Kachuk, Barkov, Hagi, Bennett. Oh, they got Kalor in there as well. Um, not as good depth as us, I don't think. Oh, Dennis Enkel on the fourth line there is pretty good. Um, defense here. Nice first pairing. Defense is pretty weak for them, honestly, but uh, their offense can definitely carry them. And in goal, 88 overall Spencer Knight with Talbot backing him up. So uh, this team is definitely good. Um, you know, we have the better defense, I think, but offensively, I think we're pretty evenly matched. And uh, let's hope that real life doesn't repeat in the game here. And let's see, six for the last three, two win. So we split the first two. 4 3 OT loss. We split that one. Tied 2 2. We'll sim it period by period. Tied after one. Tied after two. Clark there. Big goal. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Big third period from them. We go down 3 2 in the series. Back to Florida we go. Is this it for us? Let's hope not. 3-2 after one. Wow. 5-3. Okay. Big second. And we tie it. John Tavares with two goals. I believe. Yeah. Two goals. Two goals from Marner. Matthews and Velarde coming up big. So the guys we want to count on came through for us. And we are going to game seven. Oh my goodness. All right. Prayer circle, prayer circle, down two, one after one, up three, two, alrighty, we're going to sim this uh, third period here, can we get it done and move on, they tie it up, Kachuk, of course, who else, he is that dude, Tavares there, halfway through, puts us up by a goal, they tie it again, Oh my gosh. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Wow. And that's gonna do it. Um, I'm like, wow. That really sucks. <laughs> um, Matthew's there 22 points in 12 games. Uh, dude was on a heater doing everything he could to get us a series win, but unfortunately, we cannot get it done, and that really sucks, because we were playing really well, uh, I want to see what our player stats were looking like, so yeah, I mean, like, up and down the ice, people were contributing, seems like the depth sort of where we faltered but yeah samson out of there has to be better 3.34 goals against just a 0 0.906 like not good at all um like we're not going to win a stanley cup with him i don't think so he's probably going to go but disappointing end but we'll sim out to the draft and uh you know see what ends up happening in 2025 all right so here's the draft lottery we'll be picking 15th um not a bad pick honestly uh, that trade worked out for us uh, even better now. And the 2025 Stanley Cup champions are the Boston Bruins. They ended up taking down Florida in five games before beating Dallas 4-2. I believe it's the second Stanley Cup Finals that Dallas has made in a row. So good on them, but uh, fortunately both times they couldn't come over with the cup. And Boston Bruins, 2025 Stanley Cup champions take a look at the awards here we'll just go through the individual mckinnon 
Dart Ross and the Heart, McAvoy gets the Norris, Stamkos, Lady Bing, Bedard does get the Calder, Hall there with the Consmite though, interesting, Demko gets the Vesna and the William Jennings, uh, Prakio, Masterson, Ducks coach Jack Adams, Kachuri with the Selkie, McKinnon with the Ted Lindsay and Ovechkin, back to back Maurice Richards. And now here we are at the draft, guys. Take a look at the draft class here. Uh, this is the Michael Misa draft, so it looks like he will be going to the St. Louis Blues. See if there are any late gems. Oh, you them out here, so I definitely want to pin these guys. Um, yeah, that looks pretty decent, at least for us. I'm not really sure who we're going to take. We have the 15th pick, so... There's a goalie here. Could get this guy. 50-50 medium elite. Three years. Um, guess we will just have to kind of look around and browse because this draft class uh, falls off a little bit, it seems. But uh, 15th pick. Seems like we have some options. So here we are at our pick here. Look at the top five. Misa, then St. Louis. Uh, Bainak, Nordgren, and Gavin rounding out the top five. Uh, wow. Philly, what the heck are you doing, guys? Um, Jets there. Found a little gem. 80 overall. Same with the Hurricanes. And we are on the clock. So let's see who we want to take. Got this a Finneganov guy. Two years. Seems pretty solid. Three years on this guy. Mm. There's also this guy with three years. Now, I think we want to go with the scouts. Recommendation. Hope it turns out. 66 medium top six. So, does have a little superstar ability there. Not the worst, not the best, but... Who knows, sometimes these guys develop pretty nicely. Go to our next pick here at number 64. All right, guys, I'm going to select Adrian Barron here. Three years ETA, potential for some X factors. Has low top nine, but I uh, don't know. Feel I hate when it does that. Um, I feel like he could go either way. He's actually low top six, so no X factors, but, um, you know, it's decent. Next, we're going to take Philippe Papineau, 50-50, medium top six in the third round. Likely not. And he's a bottom six, so that pick sucked. Um, we'll go to our next pick here, number 188. Probably going to rush through these picks a little bit. Um, just kind of want to go to the next, like, best thing. Potential for medium elite goalies. Supposed to go 213. Um, numbers were decent. Uh, let's see. Medium backup, okay. So kind of striking out here late in the draft in 220, round 7. Uh, should be our last pick here. Uh, low elite, but definitely not going to be. We've got another potential medium elite goalie. Numbers aren't good though, so probably not going to be that. Cam Squires. Could take this guy. And low top 9. All right, in the seventh round, I'll take it. And that's gonna do it for the draft. Um, not a lot of picks here, but our pick at number 15 could be something to watch. All right, so we're in the re-signed phase here. Gonna send a contract, Jake Neighbors way. Three years, 1.5 million. Um, I don't see, uh, I mean, he's still pretty cheap. Maybe we can get him like, he's kind of cheesing it. Um, I like the fact that he'd still be an RFA, so we're going to send him this. Alright guys, so even though Samsonov is an 85, he's just not performing in the playoffs for us. So I think what we're going to do actually is, um, you know, he wants an extension, but my gut is telling me to let him go to free agency and make a big splash there with a goalie. Alright, so Neighbors renewed his contract with us. Three years. Good signing. All right, so in the free agency here, you can see some of the top guys available. Um, we have over 22 million in cap, 
So I want to make a big splash with a goalie, but I don't want to overspend here. Um, I also don't want a goalie that's going to age out too early. Gustafson is here, 87. Um, let's see what he's doing. 81 poise, though. Ah, it's hard. There's also Georgiev here. We got Samsonov, who is 28 years old, 85 overall. Um, you know, we want a guy with higher poise. He's only at 84. Um, so here is at 86. Um, I mean, we could make a splash and go for Saros. Is at a 90. Uh, and then obviously you got Shesterk in there. Is at 95. So um, I'm wondering, do we go for Saros? He's asking for seven years. That's a lot, though. A um, lot to spend on a goalie. Could also take a chance on Huso um, or Gustafson, who's slightly younger, slightly better, only wants three years. Maybe that poise develops. Um, tough decision here. All right, guys, so I have decided to offer Saros a uh, contract, but rather than the seven, I'm going to do five years, but keep it at his asking price. Um, it's high. I mean, like... It's a lot to spend on a goalie, but I think his stats are just so good. Um, maybe four, try four years. We don't want to lock in too long. See what he says to this. All right, guys. So I want to get Brent Clark locked in. Um, he's asking for four years. I want to bump him up to six. He goes up to six and a half million. He does want an extension. So I'll see if he'll take six years at 6.1 and see what he says to this. Guys, and I'm thinking of bringing back TJ Brody. Just one year, $2 million, uh, 35 years old. Really need to shore up that depth on our defense. Alrighty, so we locked in Sharon Govich for two years. Be a good depth option for us. Um, see what else. Mayfield, we bring in on defense. Um, just a good guy on the back end. Uh, TJ Brody comes back for a year. Uh, Aiden Hill renews two years, league minimum. Pretty easy on a backup there. Uh, we're just waiting to hear from Clark. There we go. Bang. That is a amazing contract on Brent Clark and Saros there. Signs with the Wild. I don't understand this. We kept it at his uh, asking. Whatever. <laughs> All right. So I'm coming back to Philip Gustav singing off for him. Three years at six million. Overpaying a little bit. Um, still a good goalie. I think he can develop a little bit more. All right, and I just noticed, guys, Sidney Crosby is still available. How cool would it be to bring him in for a year, help this team? If Gustafson says yes to our offer, we'll still have a little over $12 million in cap space for the year. Um, I think we should try and bring him in for a year. And there we go. Gustafson accepts our offer, bumped up that asking price to $6 million. Uh, a little bit expensive, but, you know, it's not too terrible, I don't think, and he's a great goalie. This guy, Sidney Crosby, said yes, so he will be joining the Toronto Maple Leafs for one year uh, at the ripe age of 37. Um, really, really cool. All right, guys, so before I show you the lines, I just want to advance here because we had some contracts that we sent out. So we're waiting here back from some people. Um, Amarov renews two years, just 1.8 million, super cheap, really good depth player for us. Uh, we have Sandine, we're waiting here back from, there we go. Uh, I believe we did four years at like 4.9 or something. Uh, really good value for an 85 overall defenseman. And I believe that was it. Yes. Um, so just take a look at our contracts real quick before I go over the lines. Uh, Sandine 4.9 for the next four years. Yes, four years, 4.9. Uh, really good value there. Um, and then again, Amarov there, two years, 1.8. So good contract decisions on our part, um, trying to keep things cheap so that we can afford some uh, big free agents. Um, and then I just want to show you the lines headed into the new year to end the episode as always. This team's looking pretty good. We got some really nice depth. Top six is absolutely stacked. Look at that second line. <laughs> Varys, Crosby, and Velarde. Like, are you kidding me? Um, first line stays the same. Uh, depth is also really good. I mean, no one below an 82. Uh, they don't have any positive chemistry, but no negatives either. But I think uh, I think they're going to play really well. This guy, Omar Blaine, 20 years old, 83 overall. Uh, hoping to get him some more ice time. Um, 
I mean, this bottom pair looks pretty good as well. Some two-way forwards and a sniper, so hopefully get some nice depth scoring. As for defense, we've got Sandine and Clark on the first pair there. Pretty nice. Uh, Roy and Liljegren on the second pair. And then Mayfield and Brody get a nice plus one on that bottom pair. Should be a good shutdown D pair for sure. Um, and also I might add some uh, superstar abilities to Sandine. I feel like he's good enough um, to have them. Like maybe just some really good... Um, you know, skating, maybe some defensive stats, um, two-way guys. So I'll probably add just a couple to him. Um, I feel like he's developed well enough to earn them. Um, so that's that. And then goalies, we got Gustafson and Hill. Um, really hoping that he will come through for us. 82 poise. So actually went up from an 81. Um, so he can definitely develop it. Um, we're hoping that he will because we need that. And then as for power play, absolutely disgusting first line, like, ew. <laughs> um, and then second power play unit, also really good. Uh, penalty kill, very solid as well on that first unit. Second unit's also really good. Um, honestly, all our penalty killing units are great. Uh, even the three men is really nice. Um, everyone has even correlation except for the third line. That's not really going to see it, the ice on the three man anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, this team looks really good. And again, I think our biggest thing is hoping that our goalie can come through in the playoffs for us. But I see us making a nice run this season. So that'll do it for this episode, guys. Uh, it was a fun one and I'm looking forward to the next season. I think we've got a really good team here. As always, if you enjoy the video, press that like button and subscribe to the channel. The support helps me out a ton. I appreciate every single one of you. So until the next episode, have a good one, y'all.